As the actor's strike enters its third week, Dwayne The Rock Johnson has given a record-breaking gift to the Sagaftra Foundation's Emergency Financial Assistance Program. According to Courtney B. Vance, president of the foundation, in such a time as this, I'm here, and I'm not going anywhere, whatever you need me to do, is what he is saying. And that strongly encourages other people to follow suit. The magazine reported Johnson's contribution as a seven-figure donation, and Vance, 63, claimed the amount was secret. He also expressed his gratitude for Johnson's kind gesture. Man, you're standing up in a way that is allowing people to recognize the critical necessity of it, he allegedly told the star of The Scorpion King. In an effort to gather money for actors who would be put in financial danger due to the possibility of a lengthy work stoppage, Vance and the foundation's executive director Sid Wilson wrote a letter to a group of the union's 2,700 highest paid performers on July 2013 when the strike started. Wilson told the publication that during the COVID-19 crisis, which halted Hollywood projects three years ago, SAG-AFTRA members who make up the union's approximately 160,000 members had stepped forward to help their friends. We need our high-profile talent who can afford it, who are in a position to help others, Wilson said. When we hit a crisis like this, we're going to spend millions and millions of dollars on financial assistance. After receiving the letter, Johnson's team contacted Zagafter representatives right once, and he and Vance had a conversation about the circumstance. Wilson described the Black Adam Star's donation as the largest single donation we've ever received from one individual at one time. And what's even more astounding is that one check will enable thousands of people to maintain their standard of living, the safety of their children, and the operation of their vehicles, it's not lost on me that he's extremely modest about it either, but it's a way to get the conversation going. The procedure for the emergency relief fund, according to Wilson, is the same as the one they established during the epidemic, when some of the biggest stars in our industry stepped up. As for Johnson, she said, for him to step up like this is really going to get us started in the fundraising that we're going to need to do, because everything we're hearing and seeing makes us feel like we have to be ready that this might continue on until the end of the year. The woman said, this contribution gave us the boost we needed to get through the first week of what we anticipate will be a lengthy journey. According to Wilson, foundation donations normally provide each member $1,500, but in cases of necessity, members may get as much as $6,000 per member. According to Wilson, 7,000 to 10,000 members regularly want respite. Everyone is aware of what occurs when people go on strike when they stand up for something. After all, if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall for everything. However, Van said that without assistance from below, to the side, to the top, and to the front, it is impossible to stand, so Dwayne announces his presence by saying, I'm here. What's your plan of action? I want to congratulate Dwayne for his incredible generosity, compassion, and initiative to stand up in such a huge and important way for our community, Vance continued, 
thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of the many who will benefit from his remarkable generosity. As the novelty of picket lines wears off, union leaders and celebrity strikers, including a slew of comedians, try to bolster spirits on Friday as the simultaneous strike by Hollywood actors and screenwriters reached its second week with no immediate conclusion in sight. Mark Moran, a stand-up comedian, writer, and actor, remarked outside the Netflix offices that the momentum is still building. I have a few of my comedy pals. Let's go, let's make sure we're there, and let's show up for our union, they said. There are many individuals present, and as you can see, ultimately, they will engage in negotiation, correct? Maron appeared in the Netflix comedy Glow. During the strike, the company's headquarters in a trendy area of Hollywood have been a hive of activity with music blasting and food trucks selling churros, ice cream, and other treats. On the picket line, he was joined by a plethora of comic actors and comedians, including Fred Armisen, Hannah Einbinder, Chelsea Poetti. Mark Proch, and longtime comedy duo Eric Wareheim and Tim Heidecker. They expressed their pessimism about a speedy resolution to the strike. Omison is a former cast member of Saturday Night Live and Portlandia. I believe it will be a protracted struggle, a protracted war, Heidecker remarked. We will have to stay here till we have what we require. However, they had faith that they would be able to eat enough to survive by. There is an Arby's nearby, and Eric hasn't eaten there in a year, according to Heidecker. We are having a large roast beef today because it has been 364 days since I last had one, according to Wareheim. At larger, more spread out corporate sites like Warner Bros. Studios and Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, where a Southern California heat wave hammered hard all week, it has been more difficult for picketers to maintain their vigor. The regular presence of famous writers and actors, however, has given a boost to picket lines in both LA and New York as the strike has dragged on and provided high-profile voices on issues that are important to both writers and actors, better pay and maintaining traditional practices like residual payments, as well as protection from the use of artificial intelligence. 11,500 screenwriters and about 65,000 actors, the majority of whom earn less than $27,000 a year from their employment in film, are on strike. Actors from both the Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists gathered in London on Friday to show their support for one another. For the rally put on by the British Actors Union Equity, celebrities including Brian Cox, Andy Serkis, Hayliot Well, Simon Pegg, and Imelda Staunton assembled in Leicester Square alongside other actors and production staff. They shouted, using a British slang word for actors, one struggle, one fight. We support Sagafter a fight and the Loveys, united, will never be defeated. I think we are at the thin end of a horrific wedge, said Cox, who portrayed media billionaire Logan Roy in succession, regarding how artificial intelligence is upending the fundamentals of actors' job. The worst part, according to him, 
is the notion of AI in general and what it may do to humans, not the pay. AI is a very, very serious matter. And it is the area in which we are most exposed. Despite the fact that many of its members also belong to the American Union, the British Actors' Union is not on strike. Cox said that it was critical for actors to support the Writers Guild of America's striking screenwriters. Without authors, we're just like pieces of furniture, he declared. I'm definitely one of the most skin actors on the globe, according to Circus, who has made a career out of portraying digitally produced characters since he first played Gollum in the Lord of the Rings trilogy two decades ago. I realize that my voice, my library of moves, or my picture may be utilized but it's terrible that they can be so easily accessed and used without paying the artist, he added. Boston, Philadelphia, and Chicago were among the major American towns that had strike activity on Wednesday and Thursday, proving that film production isn't limited to New York and Los Angeles. There is no word on when talks will pick back up with studios and streaming services, who are represented by the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. According to the organization, they have made significant salary increases for both authors and performers and have made an effort to accommodate other needs. Mission Impossible actor Simon Peck pleaded with studios and streaming providers, saying, Please come back to the table. Please be realistic. Please have a little more socialism in your heart, and think of the people who make the money for you. Many protesters in the United States have highlighted remarks made by major business leaders, such as Disney CEO Bob Iger, who last week labeled the union's demands as not realistic. Ted Sarandos, co-CEO of Netflix, said he grew up in a union family and was aware of how difficult the strike was for employees and their families during a financial event on Wednesday. We have a strong commitment to reaching a decision quickly. One that's just and allows the industry, the unions, and everyone involved to advance into the future. He added.